Jim, our next question sent to corny drive through at gmail.com from Chris in Brooklyn. I recently read the death of WCW for the first time and came up with a hypothetical that completely removes Vince Russo from the equation. I'm all for this. What if in 1999, instead of hiring Russo, WCW outright bought ECW and made Paul Heyman the head writer? Could Heyman have salvaged the WCW brand? Would an invasion angle written by Paul have worked? Keep in mind, ECW still had Taz, RVD, Mike Awesome, and the Dudleys in 1999, and they could have played off guys like Malenko, Benoit, Guerrero, who were still there, and Rey Mysterio joining them. Could we have ended up with ECW Thunder and WCW Nitro? But I guess the question, what do you think of the idea, 1999, Vince Russo is not hired. He stays in WWE. I hate that part, I'm sure. Yeah, well, no, I was about to leave too. <laughs> I had, no, I'd already come to Louisville. So he could have been there and it'd been fine. What do you think it would have meant to WCW hiring a 1999 Paul Heyman or buying ECW to get access to a 1999 Paul Heyman? Could he have saved WCW? Well, there, there's so much what ifs and the parameters of even this hypothetical situation. WCW in 19. 19- 99 and help me they had had they just about started realizing wait a minute we're not making a fortune like we used to but where they weren't really losing money yet that came in 2000 or where were they at well the ratings were starting to drop because wwe wwf at the time was getting really hot that's what made them think if we hire the man who they (laughs) somehow thought was the man of the the magic man behind wwf success that they'd be able to boost their numbers and it went the other way. Well, but the point is, I don't know that they would have bought ECW. And, but let's go with the hypothetical and say they did. But at that point, if it was up to Paul, I can see where he might've thought for immediate programming, let's do an invasion angle with with ecw just because i want to introduce my core guys see here's the thing if you put Heyman in charge of wcw creative and we're saying all these what ifs and they own the intellectual property to ecw turner broadcasting does and they bought the contracts of all the guys in ecw that he had left at that time then yes i think paul probably would have done some type of invasion of his top guys, his his Taz and a few of the others you mentioned, but it wouldn't have been an all encompassing because for one thing, the ECW guys were massively outnumbered by the WCW roster, which was well over a hundred guys at that point. So it would have been a little lopsided, but secondly, I think Paul realized that he had, a certain number of guys that may be able to make it on a national basis, but some of the ECW guys were necessity rather than choice. And if he had access to that entire WCW roster with all the names there and the way that Paulie knows how to take advantage of legends with history and you know, maybe revamp guys that have been names, but give them a little fresh coat of paint. I don't think his his uh, primary goal would have been to establish ECW as a promotion to be competitive with WCW to have a promotional war on their programming when his big war and he was and the company that he's now working for WCW was starting to lose that war. The big war was with the WWF. So I think Paul would have energized that incredible WCW roster they had of names integrate his top ECW guys into that mix with the goal being that once that they're over and have programs, you know, against some of the WCW guys that that meant something to establish them as meaningful top guys, the new ECW guys, then he has to 
like I said earlier in the program, as, uh, evaluate his roster. Now he can't have 200 guys. So there's going to be some from WCW he's going to want to cut, but they probably got contracts. It may be a problem. Some guys in ECW were working on handshakes. They may be easier to get rid of. If anybody thinks that Paul Lee would not put business in front of a personal relationship or loyalty to his former company, you're out of your mind. And he would tighten up the roster and make it as strong as he could. And he would also be putting as much time and effort into the WCW roster that he had suddenly inherited, if not more than the ECW roster, because those are still the more established guys and the major names that are going to be the lead soldiers in his fight against Vince McMahon. So by, I would think that within the first 12 months that he was there, that the ECW guys that he was going to keep would have been assimilated into the roster and uh, there would have been some basically guys that he didn't need on either roster that would have been eliminated and he would be doing everything he could to just make the WCW programming strong as possible as a counter program against WWF to try to keep the ratings war competitive. And I think he would have done a much better job than what they fucking ended up with. Yes, my God, that's, that's faint praise. But I think he would have, he would have given Vince a fucking issue at that point in time if they'd have let him go and he could have. But then again, this is all what if because Paul couldn't have existed under that strict corporate ownership and leadership and interference when he couldn't even really exist in Vince's that let most everything on the wrestling side fly. Yeah, this isn't 2023 Paul Heyman. This is 1999 Paul Heyman in his trench coat. Yeah. And so there would have, you know, but I mean, it's all what if. So we're, if we're just talking about that, what if question, Paul would have fucking give Vince some problems for a while and, uh, and would have definitely been better than what they ended up with. But eventually somebody would have thrown him out of the fucking window at, at, uh, CNN center. The TV would have been better. They probably would have been able to stop all the problems that would happen with the TV getting worse and the ratings eventually dropping. However, unless you have some executive that had the foresight to come in there in 99 and immediately cut the budget, no one knew what was going to happen with AOL Time Warner. And they ended up canceling WCW and they saw the cost. They canceled it and they yeah. sold the assets. So for Paul Heyman, for someone to save WCW, it's not just save the ratings. Because of the merger in the long run, it's also cut the costs. Well, yeah, and, and Bischoff was the one primarily responsible for the cost because he spent the money like a drunken sailor when they got hot on the contracts, and that's why they called him ATM Eric. And there was no... It was the, the same thing that Shitstein actually said articulated. I asked him, I said... What's going to happen if business goes down? Well, if we do it right, it'll never go down. Bischoff was signing contracts based on, well, if we continue to do business bigger than almost any, than any company ever in the history of the wrestling business ever has, then we'll be just fine. <laughs> but you, I don't care if they had the reanimated corpse of Luthez, Carl Gotch, and goddamn... Fucking Jim Londos. It's some Zombie point. Mania. Yeah, there you go. But business always goes down. And that's so at any rate. Um, and Paul and is Paul notoriously, not <laughs> notoriously unable to stick to a budget or handle a budget or anything related to financial means, as well as there's the punctuality quotient, which Paul was literally one step away from the grave on every deadline for anything that he ever had. And to the point where the pay-per-view company, Candido told me this himself, find them because he didn't deliver the, the tape of the, the pre-taped uh, countdown show, Barker show, pitch show, whatever, to the pay-per-view company. You know, you just said something important, though, um, comparing Heyman to Bischoff. Remember, though, Bischoff wasn't done. It wasn't like Bischoff was never coming back. Bischoff was still under contract. They sent him home 
and brought Vince Russo in, and then Bischoff came back. So at some point, that version of Paul Heyman and that version of Eric Bischoff <laughs> would have had to have coexisted. Oh, my God. That would have been entertaining. That would have been entertaining. But, hell, Heyman wouldn't, Heyman wouldn't even come out and outright just lay hands on and physically assault that Brian Gerwitz. So I don't think he would have bowed up too strong at Eric with all of that kung fu he knows.